Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is having uh, a great start to their weekend. Finally, some beautiful weather here uh, in the Northeast. It's going to be north of 70 degrees, so hopefully um, trying to, just trying to relax, trying to relax, get some fresh air, get some exercise, uh, get my tummy full and kind of decompress and get focused for the next trading week. Uh, one thing I, I will tell you, I'm sick and tired of wearing a hat. I desperately like, like everybody else needs a major haircut. But again, at the end of the day, let that be our worst problems because we are alive. So let's talk about the market. March 16th, 2020 will forever live in infamy. Okay. Uh, March 16th, of 2020, the Dow Jones Industrials dropped 3,000 3, points, okay? That was the absolute worst drop in the stock market for the last 30 years. We had everything on the table, okay? Global pandemic, uh, people dying, people are afraid, people are nervous, everything, okay? Everything. Businesses are closing, everybody's stuck in the home, just sheer panic. And if you told me, a month later, okay, we were going to have, and this is how insane the world is right now, okay? If you told me a month later we were gonna have 25 million people filing unemployment, businesses, most businesses are still closed, okay? People are going nuts, people are going stir crazy. You have the United States government, I believe, releasing a video of a UFO, right? Of a UFO, which got absolutely no play. Think about it. If this was a year ago, people go nuts, which got absolutely no play. Was it real? Was it fake? Again, at that point, at this point in our lives, it doesn't make, you know, it doesn't make a big difference. Okay. You got beef shortages. That's what she said. Okay. You have a month that contract, an individual contract on the WTI near-term contract went negative. Okay, went absolutely negative. You have people going completely crazy because the market doesn't make sense. You throw that out all together and you have a CEO putting a, a ribbon on top, Elon Musk, yesterday talking about, hey, by the way, my stock price is a little overinflated. Okay, you take all that craziness, okay, put it in a blender, press button, let it all mix in. And at the end of the day, when everything all said and done, the Dow Jones Industrial Average had its biggest move in the last 33 years in the month of April. Right? This isn't your grandfather's stock market, guys. This isn't even a stock market for the last couple of years. We are, we are completely in uncharted territory, okay? And, we, and if you've been watching this broadcast, just even the last three, four weeks, okay? I just stopped thinking. Don't wanna think anymore, don't care anymore. We know everything's crazy, we know nothing makes sense, right? And when you try to analyze what is going on on face value, the smartest human being on the planet, the most talented quant person on the, on the planet, they will never come down to a, a reason why things are happening because again, we've never seen something before. And if you told me that just on March 16th, that we were going to be where we are. If you look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, where we were on March 6th or March even 23rd, that was the low, 182, to where we were a couple of days ago at 247. It doesn't even make sense, okay? It doesn't even make sense. But again, it doesn't have to make sense anymore. And the, the most amazing part is as I'm getting uh, older and older in this business, and I'm going again, I'm going on my 21st year, uh, I, you know, I've, I've lost really all belief that markets on the surface have to do anything. Okay. They, they don't have to do anything like tomorrow, like next week, you know, you know, can the market go down 2000 points? Absolutely. Can the market rally 2000 points? Absolutely. Cause that's what we are right now. And unfortunately 
most people are sitting on the sidelines and they're getting more frustrated because they can't understand what's going on than taking the alternative, right? Taking the alternative route, having a clear head, coming in every single day fresh and just trading what's in front of them, okay? And I, I think that's a very, very basic element of survival. I think the idea that traders paint themselves in a corner every single day have such a strong, stubborn opinion of what should be happening right in front of them. They lose track of number one, the big picture. They lose track of what the market is trying to scream at them. Okay. And what they continues, continuously still do is try to will their way into the directional bias that they have such a strong opinion. And unfortunately, when you're a brand new trader, you don't have that luxury. Okay. You don't, you don't have the, the luxury of having that super aggressive conviction. Because again, let's look at the reality. Most new traders, again, are there for three years. You're basically just exposed, unless you started literally in the last you know, two, three months, you're literally exposed to the most, one of the most aggressive linear bull market runs that we had in my career, okay? Ever since even the 2009 generational bottom, that was the, you know, the end of the mortgage mess, or at least the end of the mortgage mess stock market. So unfortunately, the only thing you know is up, okay? Buy it at any price. The fact that the market goes up every single day, you don't have the, need to have the best entry in the world. You, you could at, at that point have the, the flexibility and the ability and the luxury to be in at a wrong price because the market is so strong, the market's still going to make you hold, it's still going to validate. So unfortunately, a lot of new traders believe that this was the right approach, that this is the type of market you know, that, that's gonna last forever. And just like going back to um, the internet craze, which me and my friends during that time said, wow, this is the best thing ever. I, I, can't, wait, you know, I can't wait to see what the rest of my life uh, you know, turns out. Blah, 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 internet craze only lasted for a year and a half. Okay, so the idea that if you start in the last two, three years, that everything was going to be peachy and cream at the day of the beach and the market will always make you whole. You don't need to be perfect. You can still chase. You can still get aggressive. FOMO, eh, so it's for somebody else. When you, people started realizing two months from now that, again, it doesn't work that way. Okay, it's just like the person who is naive in 2005, 2006, and raise your hand if you built your first home at the top of the market in 2007, right? Because home prices are still always going to go up. So I think this is a type of tape that really woke up, especially a lot of the newer traders. And, you know, this is the type of tape, and I, and I, I tweeted this out this morning. I, I think right now you really have to, you know, you really have to make a choice if you do want to trade. Okay, it doesn't need to be full-time. Okay. Um, not everybody needs to trade full time. You know, I think, I think the, the greatest gift you can give to yourself, if you do have uh, an income coming in, uh, it makes things a lot more clear mentally, um, you know, than if you're a professional trader and you're sitting there with no income, everything has to be perfect. You, you can't afford to sit on the sidelines. You're mentally stressed. So income is a very, very important part. But even if you're not and don't have any you know, intention of being uh, a full time professional trader, Still, this is the time that you have time on your side. There are no distractions. You don't have places to go. Your kids don't need to be chauffeured to sporting events. You don't need to take your kids to birthday parties. You don't need to go out drinking. You don't need to go out uh, to restaurants. You don't, you know, you have time on your side. Most of us who have been, you know, practicing, you know, practicing social distancing for, you know, for me, it's north of three months, three and a half months now, okay? If you're doing it, responsibility, it responsibly, you still have plenty of time to do outdoor activities, play with your family, enjoy family time, but you literally have six, seven, eight hours of a lot of downtime. And again, you really have to look yourself in the mirror right now and turn around and say, do I really want to do this? Okay, whatever capacity, that's a whole different story. Part-time, right? Full time, what, whatever your desire is, there are no excuses anymore that I don't have the time. Okay. I'm getting pulled from different places. You know, I'm getting too many distractions. You have a lot of time on your hands and this is the time, no matter what type of trader you are. And again, I trade pivots. You might be trading mid caps. You might be trading Forex or future, whatever your desired choice of trading is. Okay. 
you, this is the time that you have to put everything aside. You have all the time in the world, sit down and really make it work. Because again, if you can't dedicate this time, I, I, I can guarantee you when the, when the world eventually opens up again, and again, that could be three weeks from now, three years from now, or 30 years from now, we don't know. We don't know. We'd like to think, we'd like to be optimistic that life comes back to normal sooner than later, but we, we honestly don't know. I mean, look what happened to Georgia. The governor of Georgia opened up uh, Georgia for a week at a thousand cases in 24 hours, right? So we, we don't know. We want to, but we don't know how long we're going to be in this situation. Uh, and again, if you have any, any, any aspirations of doing this part-time, uh, full-time, you have to sit your ass down four or five hours a day on the weekends, look at charts. Again, like I've been saying this for years, even if you don't know what you're looking for, okay? Eventually, by looking at charts and back testing where stocks came from, not where they're going, but where they came from, you're gonna start picking up a lot of consistent patterns, a lot of consistent moves. And once you start looking at more and more charts, eventually it's gonna start creeping up in your subconscious and you will have that light bulb moment. Again, if you trade Forex, if you trade, uh, uh, if you trade futures, it's a little bit of a different animal than trading individual equities because, again, uh, especially with futures, you have a 24-hour market. But, again, there has to be some sort of arbitrage that you can take advantage of. There has to be some sort of edge that you can sharpen. So, again, do yourself a favor. This is the absolute time. You're, you're not going to get another time like this in your, in, your, in your life to have this much freedom to take reins of what you want to do you know, again, get on that track, get your butt in the seat, and finally start taking uh, necessary steps uh, to longevity. So uh, April was absolutely nuts. Uh, yesterday, you know, yesterday was one of the most, we one of the weirdest days I, 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 I could remember. I was so tired, just to give you an idea, a very solid week of trading. Again, if you've been watching, uh, if you've been watching this broadcast for a while, you, you kind of know what we've been doing. Um, but I was so tired come Thursday night, Okay, I, I woke up Friday and I go, I don't even want to trade. I really don't. I, I, I'm so tired. For all you guys who were in the live webinar, when, when I was doing morning, uh, morning strategy, I was like, I'm just not into it. You know what I mean? My brain is dead. I could hardly, I could hardly speak. Let's see what we have. And you know, the market, you know, the market kind of opened lower, right? You had Amazon down. Uh, you had Apple down. Everything was down, but but they weren't down enough. That was that was the most important part. They weren't down enough, at least at the open. And everything was kind of sitting in the middle of the range. And if you look at, uh, and if you look at, the, you know, if you look at the Twitter feed here, this is the private Twitter feed. Uh, I go, everything's stuck in the middle of the ranges. Uh, we're going to be a little bit more extra patient today. It's a solid month. It's the first day of the month. I'm exhausted. Again, you don't need to trade every single day. I'm, you know, I'm going to be 46. I don't have the same energy that I had at the, you know, at the age of 24, 25 when I first started trading. So I'm not going to have the same, you know, let's go getting too old for this stuff. Um, but like I said, let's see what happens. And I, you know, I, I think the day started out exactly how I thought everything was in the middle of the ranges. They really needed to be confirmed. But the most amazing part about trading is, and this is why I, I always say it's the greatest reality show that's not on television. Okay. You just don't know where the craziness will start. And although I didn't participate in the craziest, craziest thing, I just kind of, uh, we'll talk about that in a second. You could really, you could really appreciate no matter what level of experience you are, okay, as a, a trader, aspiring trader, professional trader, the greatest gift you can give yourself is the ability to have control, okay? FOMO out the window, right? FOMO out the window. You accept missing trades. You accept not taking trades. You accept taking trades that are bad. You're accepting everything the market has to get you. And the only way you're ever going to run that whole gamut, right, is through time. So for all the traders who are trying to rush the development, it's going to come in time. For all the traders who can't hold on to a winner, right, it's going to come in time. For all those traders that are still uh, envious and, and, and going crazy about what they see somewhere else, that too shall pass. Everything will get better in time. So don't ever rush your development. But when you look at Friday's session, and maybe I picked the wrong day to really take off. You know, I took a couple of pivots. Uh, Zoom, I took to the upside, made some money. Uh, Roku to the downside, took, made some money. But I didn't participate in Amazon, and I didn't participate in Tesla. And I was okay with that because 
I was so bent out of shape. I, again, it takes so much mental equity. A lot of people, especially a lot of new traders, they don't realize when you're trading for a long period of time and you're waiting for a very specific move, right? Very, very specific setup. Once you get into that, into that setup, you are all in on mental equity. Okay, it doesn't make a difference what type of size you're trading, what your account side is, you know, you're all in mental equity. So when you go through a whole week and really solid week, no complaints, when you get to that point that mentally you are on tilt, okay, you have to make a choice. You're either going to trade for the point of trading, for the sake of trading, or you are going to put yourself in a situation that says, you know what, there is no mental trade. There is no trade right now that I want. And again, 2020 vision is much much easier than not, but you know, but I'm okay with what happens next. And when you look at the day, it, it got very, very aggressive. Um, and you know, thinking about it this morning, I said to myself, ah, maybe you should have, you know, maybe you should have gunned it out a little, you know, maybe you should have toughened up a little bit more, but again, you got to live with your decision. So let's talk about the day. Um, shop, I, I still like shop. I'm very, very surprised it didn't break down aggressively. Um, shop levels of note, and I was watching, and I was watching obviously Amazon was down like 150 points. We'll talk about the Amazon pivot in a second, which again, I personally did not take because again, I was shot. Um, so I'm, I'm watching Amazon. First thing I watch, Zoom, uh, 131 for builds below, can see 29s that obviously never got there. We actually, I actually took a pivot to the upside, which is so ironic. I took Zoom and not Amazon, but again, it's a whole different story. So shop levels of note, uh, 615, 603, both big areas. Uh, need to build. And obviously, I, again, I, I was playing the theory of if Amazon gets pulled down like 200, right? Shop is going to get. So I figured there's going to be much more value on shop than it was on Amazon. So here is the levels. We talked about 615 and then 603. And shop, you know, shop started going down pretty aggressively and all the way down to 595. Uh, so if you did take the trade, good job. Again, I was completely removed mentally already, uh, almost at this point of the day. Uh, if you took it, I mean, good trade. You had a $20 candle here. I'm very, very surprised uh, that it didn't collapse more, especially when, when Amazon uh, reached its uh, first measure of potential in the charts. We'll talk about that in a second, but I still like it. I know, I know the report this week. If it could remount, uh, if, if, if the sellers can remount this uh, 595 ahead of earnings, uh, you could get a test here back down to this channel here in the 550s. Very, again, very, very possible. So um, that was that. mRNA, a uh, nice little spike on mRNA for those of you guys who took it. Uh, 4960 needs to build. Here is mRNA. Uh, we were watching the order flow come in on mRNA. Buyer came in for the May uh, 55. So 4960, right? 4960 was the pivot right here. Uh, excuse me, right over here. 49.60 was the pivot right over here. And they, um, listen, nice move. You know, almost almost a buck on a $50 stock. Again, it's the difference between a buck on a $50 stock, $30 stock versus, you know, a Tesla and Netflix, a completely different uh, different game. Uh, here was the big one. Well, for the exception of Tesla, but but here was the big one. Uh, 23.09. If you guys remember on Thursday night when uh, Amazon came out with earnings, I, I, I put it, I, I by accident, Tweeted out in my regular feed instead of the instead of the private feed. Twenty three ten becomes the line in the sand for Amazon, and two ninety obviously from Apple. And then I realized I put it in, in, into my regular feed, but whatever. So we, we kind of knew the line in the sand going in. Uh, Twenty three oh nine for builds below can flush. And again, all these trades again for all you guys who are trading uh, on the PS sixty theory. You know every trade is a second entry. So here was Amazon. So basically, what that means is let it go through that number, right? Let it go through that 2309 number, let it establish a new low, let it rally back up, and once it confirms that low, hence the second entry, uh, the stock should fall apart. And this thing got buried, I mean, absolutely buried. Again, again, seller's regret, I didn't take the trade. Again, I was exhausted, really, really exhausted. Again, okay, I can live with it. Not really, but I can live with it. So 2309, second entry, uh, went down all the way down to 2258. I, I said there's a shot it gets down to the 2250s. It was the rising uh, support. But again, at the end of the day, my, men, my, my mental chips are much more important than any individual trade. Uh, and, here, and again, here's the most ironic part. I actually took Zoom, right? Uh, Zoom rejected. Uh, 140 needs to reclaim. Uh, Zoom was a nice little, you know, nice little trade. Nothing crazy. But here's the 140. Here's the 140 we talked about. 
Uh, here's the 140 we talked about right over here, right? Here's the 140, got rejected twice. It remounted, went all the way up to 141.63. You know, I took some cash flow on the trade, nothing crazy. Um, 482 on Tesla, never, obviously never got there. We'll talk about Tesla in a second. Netflix continues to be a really good trader, it really does. Uh, 424.50, 425.00. Uh, needs to build. Um, and again, I passed on Netflix, right? Again, you could tell mentally where I was. I was completely burnt out. And, and it's so ironic, the stocks that I actually trade every single day, I actually didn't trade them. So I took the stocks that I usually don't trade every day, except for the exception of Roku. Roku is, I trade all the time. But uh, here is Netflix. We talked about this area right here, this whole area right here, uh, which was uh, 224, right? 424 and a half, 425. Uh, Netflix went to 428. Again, Netflix continues to be an absolute you know, great trader. Uh, take on the way. Uh, Facebook never had a second entry. Took out 206.90, 207. Went to like 207.20s. Never had a second entry. Uh, Roku, I actually caught pretty well. The, the, again, those are the only, only two trades of the day. I took Zoom for some cash flow. Roku is nice. Uh, Roku, 116.65. Uh, if it builds below, can flush. Again, set, it went down initially to uh, $16.16, .16, then rallied back up. So that 16 level was the second entry. Uh, that's where I got short. Um, and here was Roku, right? Here was Roku, and the reason why 16 and a half was such a big area, right? That's where it stopped this whole area here. That was the low uh, from 429, from April 29th. And once it started building, um, I thought it had a shot to get the 1360s, 14. Uh, my lowest cover was 14. Um, so I was, you know, I was fine with that. Okay. And then I watched it go to 11. Okay. It happens. And that point I said, okay, I'm really done. Okay. I'm really done. I don't care what happens for the rest of the day. I'm really done. I'm on fumes. I'm on empty. And this is where I wish I would have just held on for one more, one more trade. And that one little trade was Roku new lows, blah, blah, blah. Amazon got killed, blah, blah, blah. Again, congratulations. You guys took those trades. Fantastic. Uh, Roku was good. So here is where here is where I wish I could I could kind of turn back the clock. And I know a lot of you guys did incredibly well with the trade. I got tons of emails after the close. I got, you know, in the webinar, all that stuff. So we're sitting there and I'm watching and I'm watching like just just watching Tesla. And all of a sudden I see this really weird candle goes from 758 to 753 in seconds. Usually you don't see an aggressive move. Unless there's a really, really aggressive pivot that, I'm, that I've been watching or some sort of news comes out. And I'm sitting there and I go, yo, is there any news on coming out on Tesla? Nobody says a word. Nobody knows, right? And then all of a sudden I hear my squawk box. And again, I, I, I didn't see it on Twitter. All of a sudden I hear my squawk box turning around and saying, well, Elon Musk thinks uh, the company is overvalued. And this is where you turn around and say, man, is there anything crazier that can happen in 2020? Aliens, right? Aliens, oil contracts going negative, Corona. I mean, is there anything crazier, right? Anything crazier. The only thing crazier that my mother-in-law explodes in 30,000 different pieces and put herself back together and becomes stronger than ever. That would be the only crazy thing that's left. So you're sitting here and you basically had Elon Musk. And again, I love Tesla, long, short, doesn't make a difference to me. But please give me what he was on, man. And I had to say to myself, this guy, did he just really say his company, the price of the stock is overvalued? And I go, no, there's no way. It had to be hacked, right? That everybody's first thing to me was this guy is either high as hell, right? I don't know what he was on. High as hell, drunk as hell, having a midlife crisis, having a revolver into his mouth, something is wrong. And you start looking at his, his Twitter feed, I'm selling all my worldly possessions. It dude sounded like he was on death's door. Okay, so I don't know what was up with this dude, but everybody thought this, you know, everybody thought it was hacked, right? He was hacked. Until they, until they asked him, I, I forgot what, what regulatory body asked him, they go, hey, was this you? And he's like, yeah, it, it was me. So 741, and again, I just, I, I regret it now. Yes, I, I admit, I regret it now. Uh, but 741, if it builds below, can flush. I thought the stock would get down to 706. That was the bottom of the range here. Again, and you, you kind of, you kind of, you kind of say to yourself, and again, I know a lot of you guys did very, very well in the trade. 
I know you say to yourself, you say, how, how can, you know, how can a CEO do this? And, and again, it's amazing. I know a lot of people hate Elon. A lot of people love Elon, but they're just thinking out loud. I mean, how do you not have a class action lawsuit from your investors? Like, how do you, how do you, in your right frame of mind, make a statement like that? Again, the shock factor, the shock factor is obviously there, but nevertheless, uh, here is a 741 pivot on Tesla. Right here is a 741 pivot on Tesla. It was right here. Okay, 741. I thought it could get down to 706, and it just went through 706, went all the way down uh, to 683. Again, I know a lot of you guys did incredibly well in the trade, best stock ever. I mean, yeah, I mean it's it's absolutely incredible. Right, right to support. Um, yeah, 7, 706 target now. And again, I'm very very jealous of all you guys. This is definitely. <laughs> This is definitely a big miss for me, but again, at the end of the day, uh, it's much more important, right? Much more important for me to have uh, mental sanity, my mental health uh, going into uh, the next trading day, uh, ne next trading week, and that's exactly what we are. So, uh, and I know, by the way, there was another, uh, there was another spike after the, the pivot of 2309 on Amazon went down to the 2250s. Uh, the last pivot of the day was 2300 needs to build uh, for a spike. And here is where I got the 2300 from, right? Here is, you see this candle into supply, right? This candle into supply was 2299. So it needed the next candle to confirm it. So 2300, nice little 13, $14 candle. I know some of you guys took the trade as well. Uh, overall, you know, really good week. Uh, really good week, obviously. I picked the wrong day to get mentally fried because, um, you know, I only took a couple of trades on Friday. But again, Jomo, the joy. Of missing out. So uh, going into this week, technically, um, you know, let's take a look. I mean, it's really hard to say. Look, you have you have still a really ridiculous uptrend here in the queues, okay, and, and most indexes. You have a lot of support here. I, I don't think you you start to panic um, as a bull bias trader until they start cracking below the 208 level. Again, we've seen this movie now for the last two weeks, over under 213. I mean, literally, over under 213 uh, for the last two, you know, they just can't, they just can't stake their claim. Bulls and bears just can't stake their claim uh, on this level. Now, again, we closed lower there. I, I think some concern starts to pop up uh, if we start closing below 208. Okay, I think that's a, a very, very important level. Um, I think to the upside, I think bulls really need to reclaim back the five-day moving average which is uh, 215 and a half. Um, I, I think ultimately, we, it, 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 the environment is really good, okay? I, I don't think you need to have a lot of exposure overnight. I, I think because of the average true ranges, they're so wide, they're so large, they're so exaggerated. I think you have the ability uh, to kind of pick and choose your spots. So the idea that you need overnight exposure with so much uncertainty, uh, I got look, to each his own, to, you know, everybody's an adult. But for me personally, I like coming in flat, uh, identifying the ranges, waiting for them, and kind of waiting for them to confirm. So, guys, have a great remainder of your weekend. Uh, please put in the work. You got to put in the work. If you're trading pivots, uh, keep on watching the workshops, the 2.0, the 3.0. It's all repetition. The more you do it, uh, the, the slower the game becomes. And, again, time cures uh, all. Guys, God bless. Stay healthy. Stay safe. And I'll see you all on Monday. Take care, guys. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today. Thank you.